Nikolai, and we welcome everyone today to the International Baptist Church of Budapest. Uh, today, of course, is a holiday weekend. In addition to that, a very quick reminder, today is the day that we celebrate online the Lord's Supper. So you still have a few moments. If you haven't done so already, please find some bread Please find some juice. It doesn't have to be anything special. Any kind of bread, any kind of juice is perfectly acceptable. The Lord sees our hearts. It's the condition of our hearts. It's not the quality of the bread or the quality of the cup. But as we have that time of celebration today, we invite everyone to join us. Uh, week by week, there is such a good time with the children in the, uh, in the worship service. Um, uh, this week, uh, just as last week, they're, they're continuing on with the theme. And it's, it's so special. If you, uh, if you want to, uh, another reminder, please uh, think about joining the service early, beginning at 10.05. Our children have their uh, special time together. Antonio led them last week and this week as well. Let's, uh, let's have a word of prayer today as we continue through with our service. Father, we do thank you for this day that you've given to us. Father, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, as it's a holiday weekend here in Budapest, uh, people are having different kinds of celebrations. Father, for us as brothers and sisters in the Lord, we get to celebrate today the Lord's Supper. And Father, we pray uh, what we say, what we do, what we read, what we share together, Father, today will be pleasing in your sight. It's in your son's name that we pray. Amen. Mentioning our children once more, I have a question for everyone. How many books in the Bible were written by someone called John? Do you know how many books in the Bible were written by someone named John? And how many books in the Bible have his name on them? Okay. Now, those who said, what was the right answer? How many books are written by John? Five. What? There is the Gospel of John, and then there is the book First John, Second John, and Third John. But what's the fifth book that John wrote? Revelation. Okay. Our children have two different memory verses this, this uh, month. One is from Luke 4, 8. Okay. And one of the memory verses is from 1 John 4, 8. But Luke 4, 8 says this. Jesus replied, the scriptures say, you must worship the Lord your God and serve him only. That's one of the memory verses that the children are working on this month. And the second memory verse is from 1 John 4, 8. And it says, anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. And this week, our children were learning about generosity. It was a wonderful lesson, including the story of the Good Samaritan. As we continue in our worship service today, Nikolai, would you please lead us now in a time of singing? Well, now it's not easy to say, come on, get ready, your hands to clap, any voices to sing. But yet, if, uh, if it's happening, they're right there, right on. Let your walls and your rooms will hear your voice. And whatever it is, uh, would tremble while you're singing. <clears throat> because we do that in faith and fun and in joy. Let's go, come on. Thank you. 
Let's do another one. It's an old song, and I thought of pull it out uh, for a reminder. And then, what is the river flow? Well, there is a Revelation book, right? Uh, there is a say there is a river flowing. You know, we're gonna see that. We're gonna use it. We're gonna we're gonna like that, and we're gonna enjoy that. So let's try that in song. Let the poor man say, "I'm enriching him." Let the lost man say, I'm finding him. Let the river flow. Let the blind man say, I can see again. Let the dead man say, I'm born again.
Thank you very much, Nikolai. As we continue our celebration today, there are words from Paul to a church in Corinth in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And as Paul shared with the Corinthian church many teachings throughout the book of 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians, he also gave instructions about the celebration of the Lord's Supper he stressed how important it was. Uh, in fact, he had words that were very strong, that there were people who were uh, having divisions within the church, and instead of focusing on Christ, they were focusing on other things. And so Paul, in a very candid way, when he came to seeing how they were celebrating the Lord's Supper, he gave them some strong words that they needed to reconsider what they were doing. And in part of that reconsideration, Paul says, let a person examine himself then and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Of course, we are so grateful for what the Lord has done for us, but we realize that each of us, we do need to take moments of self-examination and reflection in our own hearts. Our elder Hinnon will lead us in a time of prayer as we do pause for moments of self-examination and reflection. Hinnon, please. Hello, church. Uh, good morning. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for this. Uh, before uh, entering prayer, I just would like to, to quote uh, the words of Jesus here in John uh, Chapter 12, verse 25, that I, Jesus really talked to me, and, and um, it's important to share one of this, this really tough message of the cross that uh, it says, anyone who loves their life will lose it, while <clears throat> anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. I mean, the message of the cross. The, the celebration that you have today it's really to remember that jesus taught us to hate our own life and this is impossible for us because we always want to please ourselves but uh i think the message of the cross is to to really follow the steps of jesus and as we examine ourselves as we we go deep now uh, I ask you, everyone, to to think about this, to go deeper in this in these words of Jesus, because uh, His word is life, and uh, we want to to rest on that and to prepare ourselves before uh, taking the the bread and the cup. So uh, let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for uh, this time that we can have with you, with. Uh, the body of Christ, thank you because we can get together this morning, even with everything that is going around us. Sometimes we ask ourselves how we, we could be in this situation that we are with so many things going around us that really could uh, rest on you and know that you are the Lord and uh, that you rule lives, that you uh, allowed all of these things to happen. Uh, in our lives so we could be close to you we could uh, have the gifts of the spirits being being uh, shown in our lives uh, help us to to understand what is to follow your steps and to really uh, 
sacrifice our flesh as we did, as you did, and to really uh, hate our own lives so we can love others and we can uh, look for the eternal life, not the life in this world. So thank you very much for all of the brothers and sisters that put their time, put their effort to be here this morning to celebrate the, the message of the cross today. And also as you, we prepare and we um, go forward the, the Passover and we remember this, the biggest miracle that you, you did for us in the cross. So I pray in your name, Jesus, amen. Thank you very much, Shannon. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. Our elder David will pray for us today and have the prayer for the bread. Oh Lord, we thank you for this bread, this bread that represents your body broken for us on the cross, Lord. Lord, we thank you that even in this time of COVID, we can still come to you, Lord, and receive your salvation, Lord. Not because we deserve it, because you choose to give us your salvation. We thank you so much for the, for the gift of salvation. Amen. The Bible says that when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. As you are able to do so in your home today, please now eat of the bread. The Bible says, in the same way also he took the cup after supper. Our elder Wong will have our prayer today for the cup. Wong, you're on mute. Okay, let's pray. Lord, we thank you. Is your love, mercy, and grace bring us together, come before you. As we take this cup representing your blood poured out from cross, we realize that you are the supreme sacrifice for all of sin, past, present, and future. Because of your blood shed for us, and we can be free from the power and the penalty of sin. Thank you, Lord, for your victory over the death. And you took the death that we deserved. You took our punishment. Today, we together remember and celebrate the precious gift of life you give us through your blood. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. The Bible says that Jesus said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. 
do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. As you are able to do so in your home, please partake of the cup. Let's pray. Father, even today in our children's uh, story time, lesson time, there was the story of the Good Samaritan. Father, there was a reminder of love. There was encouragement, Father, of generosity. Father, in the sacrifice of your son, we see the perfect example of humility and of love. Father, as we do pause to remember, as we look forward and think about Easter, Father, as we consider the sacrifice that your son made on the cross for us, Father, we have done these things in remembrance of him. And Father, not only as we do this during this time of worship, but as we go throughout the week, Father, may we truly be grateful for what you have done for us, Father. It is in your son's name that we thank you, Father. Amen. Another aspect of our worship is our giving of time, of energy, and yes, also financially, and our brother today in the Lord, Ed, is going to have our prayer on our behalf for tithes and offerings. Uh, Ed, if you can unmute your microphone, we will turn it to you. Thank you, Ed. Good morning, friends. Let us pray. We're grateful to you, dearest God, for your loving care and protection for all of our loved ones, for our family, for our friends, and for our colleagues, those that are physically close to us, as well as those that we haven't been able to smile at, hug and kiss in person for so long. Because they are living, working, or studying abroad and cannot freely travel, or because they are just across town, but find it's too risky to, to travel and visit at this time of the pandemic. Father, thank you for strengthening us physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Thank you for the arrival of the vaccines. Father, we pray for your nonstop mercy. Bless us with steadfastness and resilience. And Heavenly Father, help us to be patient just a little while longer, assured that your help is on the way. Just as the Lord is abundant in his unwavering love for us, let us be abundant with the Lord and worship him through our generosity of giving. While giving generously for the maintenance of our church, we also support our outreach programs including assistance to those experience sudden and un unexpected difficulties in their lives. We express our gratitude to all the members of the congregation for their steadfast financial support through this particularly turbulent time, especially in this time of severe and unexpected shocks to our healthcare system, to our businesses, to our jobs, to our lives, and to our livelihood. We're grateful and we pray for your continued generous support. Heavenly Father, loving God, we are fixing our gaze firmly on your son, Jesus Christ, knowing that you are always right there by our side. Amen.
Thank you very much, Ed. And we continue to thank everyone who has learned how to adjust uh, on the mechanical details of giving during this time, who go online and who make it possible for us to continue. We are so grateful for that. Uh, today, as we transition to the sermon time, if you have your own copy of scripture, please find the book of James. We'll be looking today in James chapter 1, verses 22 through 25. Now, <clears throat> we were reading in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 when we celebrated the Lord's Supper just a few moments ago. In the same book, in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20, Paul said, the kingdom of God does not consist in talk, but in power. And today, as we look at James chapter 1, verses 22 through 25, we're going to continue considering and then putting into, effect, putting into action that faith is action. Okay, how many great stories do we know about that begin with that phrase, once upon a time? <laughs> once upon a time, there was a person who had a dream. This person could dream a city that was on a hill, and that city would be so full of fantastic things. Or once upon a time, there was a woman who had a dream. She loved to cook food, and she would love to have a restaurant that as she prepared her home dishes, Others could benefit from that. Once upon a time, there was a person that had a dream that in this country, if a canal could be built, it would, it would help people tremendously. They wouldn't have to take such a long distance around the country. They could make a shortcut through the country. Once upon a time, there are so many stories that begin with a person that has a dream. Now, once upon a time, as a person has that dream, there are also lots of details that must be taken care of. <laughs> that city on the hill, that's going to require lots of details. That restaurant, there's going to be things that need to be purchased, menus that need to be created. That canal that's going to be dug, it's going to involve so many people working on so many different levels. So the dreamers are also uh, joined together by the detailers, but ultimately there have to be the doers. The person that says for this city on the hill to exist, we've got to start building homes. We've got to start making roads. We have to start taking care of these things. That person in the restaurant that says, well, we've got to start cooking the meals. We can dream about it. We can work out the details or that person on the canal says someone has to dig that first level of dirt. Now, every one of us in our lives, we're combinations of all three. We all three, we have all three aspects in our lives. We have dreams. As adults, we, we realize that there are details that must be attended to. But after the dreams and after the details, it still comes down to doing. And today in James chapter 1, verses 22 through 25, James says, But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. Simple phrases for us to consider today, but looking just verse by verse, back to verse 22. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. We can listen to God's word. God's word, in fact, can be true. But just because we listen to God's word, just because we acknowledge that it's true, 
if that's all that we do, if we're only hearers, then James says we're deceiving ourselves. He goes on and explains in verse 23. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. Each morning when we get up, we shower, <laughs> men, we shave. Well, unless you have a beard, then you groom, you trim. <laughs> but still, we brush our teeth. And in that whole process, we're looking intently at, at our face. We're looking at the mirror, so to speak. He goes on, he says in verse 24, for he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like. Now, if we stay with the thought in this, in this series of verses, just because someone reads the Bible, even if they look intently at what it's teaching, they can somehow become self-focused and they can miss the fact that not only were they supposed to read God's word and to understand God's word, but they were supposed to implement God's word. But instead of doing that, they, they forget and they just walk away. <laughs> and how many, how many people have we seen coming down the sidewalk? I, I know this is a judgmental statement, but how many people have we seen coming down the sidewalk? And we see how, we see how they're dressed and we wonder huh, did someone tell them that that looks good? Hmm, <laughs> did, did they think that when they left the house, that that's the way that they should be attired? Did someone tell that poor woman that that kind of makeup looks good on her? Hmm, maybe they were looking in the mirror, maybe they had made their own self-assessment, but as they walked away out into the world, other people had a different viewpoint. Going down to the key verse, though, today, verse 25. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. There are the laws in the Old Testament, and of course, those laws can be so helpful as we've been looking, though, section by section in the book of James, we've been reminding ourselves that the good news of Jesus Christ, the gospel of Christ, the fact that a person can be born again, this is the fulfillment of all of the laws of all of the teachings in the Old Testament. This is the good news that our sins have been forgiven, that we can live a transformed life. And as we look into this, as we look into this perfect law, it becomes a law of liberty. We're not under bondage. We're not under slavery from the past. No, sin no longer has control over us. Instead, the good news of Christ, as we look intently into this, as we study this, both the written word and the living word, this is a perfect law. This is a law of liberty. But as we look at all of these things that are possible, we need to persevere, not only being hearers, we can hear the fantastic good news of Jesus Christ. But it's not merely enough to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. We need to act and persevere. Being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, what will happen? He will be blessed in his doing. All right. Two fundamental questions and choices to make today. Question number one. And this question will sound so foolish, but question number one is this. Do you want to be deceived? Now, it's fun to go to a magician's show. In fact, that's the whole purpose of the magician's show. He knows that he's fooling us. We know that he's fooling us. And we try to figure out what took place. So yes, there are some times in our lives that we actually go and watch a magician, but really, do you want to be deceived in your life? Well, then the choice number one is this. Keep looking 
into a self-focused mirror. Just keep looking at the Bible, if you please. Just keep becoming more and more self-focused. Oh, wow, I, I know so much more about the Bible than I ever knew before. Oh, my goodness, I have so many. You know what? Not to be arrogant, but I actually know a little bit more about this passage than it seems the other people in the room know. <laughs> no. Do you want to deceive yourself? Well, then just keep looking and studying, and, and, and this is going to be the result. You're going to be deceived and you're going to be looking into that self-focused mirror. Question number two in these verses, though, do you want to be blessed? Well, I think the answer is obvious. Of course, we want to be blessed. Well, then make the second choice. Look into God's perfect law and persevere in doing what God says to do. You know, there are people who read runner's magazines. Oh, they love to read those runner's magazines, but they never run. There are people who love to go to art museums and read books and in fact become an art critic, but they never paint anything. There are stadiums that are full of spectators that watch the athletes down on the field and they and they criticize from the outside what those people are doing and they see so clearly oh look at all the mistakes that that person made on that play you know there was a man named D.L. Moody he was a very famous preacher in years gone by and he was sharing one time about how he told other people about Jesus Christ and as he shared his practices, when the service concluded, a woman came up to him and said, uh, Mr. Moody, I, I've got to tell you, I, I, don't, I don't agree with the way that you tell other people about Jesus Christ. And D.L. Moody responded and said, well, I, I try to be open to new ideas. Please share with me, how do you tell other people about Jesus Christ? And she stopped and she said, oh, I don't tell anyone about Jesus Christ. And he paused and said, well, dear madam, I like the way I do better than the way you don't. There was another man named Martin Luther. He lived from 1483 to 1546. And Martin Luther said, where there are no good works, there is no faith. If works and love do not bloom forth, it is not genuine faith. The gospel has not joined a foothold and Christ is not rightly known. We need to be doers of God's word, not merely hearers. Husbands, we can read and we can hear in the Bible that we need to love our wives, that we need to be careful that we don't anger our children and cause them to turn away from the Lord. But men, no matter how much we read that, no matter how much we know it's true, if we're not actively loving our wives and our children, we're deceiving ourselves. We have all the right teachings in the Bible, but we're not following through. We can read about that we need to forgive someone else, and we can know that it's true, but we can keep waiting for that other person to take the first step. We can read that Christ has freed us from all the sins of our past, that we can live a transformed life. But until, until we start stepping out in faith and claiming those promises, even earlier in the book of James, if you have your Bible open in front of you, even earlier as we looked in those first verses earlier in this chapter, no matter what trial we're going through, if we take the step of asking for God's wisdom, if we continue to persevere and follow him, even trials that we go through can be seen as blessings. There's an old poem. Uh, no one knows uh, who wrote this poem. It's, it's by that famous author, Unknown. <laughs> But as we look today at his words, that famous poet, that famous uh, poet, it's a simple refrain, and it says, 
do it now. If you've got a job to do, do it now. If it's one you wish were through, do it now. If you're sure the job's your own, do not hem and haw and groan, do it now. Don't put off a bit of work, do it now. It doesn't pay to shirk, do it now. If you want to fill a place and be useful in the race, just get up and take a brace, do it now. Don't linger by the way, do it now. You'll lose if you delay, do it now. If the other fellows wait or postpone until it's late, you hit up a faster gate, do it now. What is God saying to your heart today? You know that God's speaking to your heart. What is the next right thing that you are supposed to do in your walk, in your personal walk with the Lord? As you look at his word, as you consider how it applies to your life, what's the next thing that you need to do? As that poem says, do it now. As we go into this week, make a commitment to do these three things. Not just this week, but in an ongoing way. Number one, study the Bible with someone every week. Yes, continue to look into the perfect law, the law of liberty. Continue to be a good student of the word, the written word, but also the living word of Christ. Find someone else and study the Bible with someone every week. Yes, it is profitable. Yes, we should study the Bible individually, but we also need to study the Bible in community. Study the Bible with someone every week. Number two, pray with someone every week. Again, our lives from the first morning breath and until we go all through the day, you're constantly praying within your spirit quietly. You're constantly asking for God's help. And of course, that's good. We need to do that. But we also need to pray with others. Make a commitment that you're going to pray with someone else every week. And then number three, take an action. Bless one person each week. The simplest phone call, the simplest kindness, the, the acts, of, the acts of, of blessing someone else. We need to be doers of God's word. We need to persevere. That is what brings blessing, not merely listening, not merely thinking, not merely criticizing what someone else does or does not do. We need each one of us to find ways to be doers of the word. As we continue now, once more, our brother and friend Nikolai will lead us in another song. Nikolai. The splendor of the king Close to the majesty Stay. 
spirits are alive in the land, alive in the land, sing about you can put it all the praise, my heart was hungry, my heart was hungry, my heart was hungry. Thank you very much, Nikolai. Thank you for leading us in our worship of singing today. Um, it's a nature of our church that we always have transitions. Uh, people are coming, people are leaving. It's the nature of our church. There's also the reality of what we're doing, uh, recording these worship services. We're trying our best to only record those who have agreed to be on screen. Today, immediately following our benediction, please, everyone, please stay on for just a few moments as I uh, share with you a transition that's taking place uh, that I heard about uh, just yesterday from, from one of the dear members of our church. I was informed some details about what's happening uh, directly from one of the members of our church. And so please, after our benediction, stay on for a few moments. Uh, and uh, we want to talk about that, but we want to talk when we've stopped the recording, if that, if that, makes, uh, if that makes sense to you. That, that know what we're doing. As far as our community updates go, uh, please go to our webpage, the ibcbudapest.org. That's the number one way that we can communicate is if you will go to that webpage, if you will make sure that you fill out the contact information and submit that to us, then we can write to you and include you in our weekly newsletter that has so many details. And also thank you, everyone that's liking our Facebook page. I know that you can also recommend our Facebook page to others. Thank you for those that are doing that, those that are liking it and those that are recommending it to others. We are approaching Easter and there are a series of online devotionals they're from a person called The Secret of the Cross. Again, we send that link out to you in our weekly newsletter. If you would like to follow that in your own daily preparation as we look forward to Easter. The children's time is happening every Sunday at uh, 
Also, every week there is discipleship training that is taking place. Our dear brother Hernando is leading in those efforts. We can get you connected to him. Every Sunday there is a young adults Bible study. Uh, there are a few people who come and join us here in the apartment and then others who join us online. Uh, please, if you would like to participate in that, get in touch with us. We can tell you how to do that. Also, every week on Tuesdays, there's a prayer time at 7 p.m. On Thursdays, uh, there is a business fellowship that's led by our, by our dear friend, Ed Sanborn. In the middle of the week on Wednesday night, there's a Bible study at 6 p.m. So Tuesday night prayer, Wednesday night women's Bible study, Thursday, uh, the, the uh, business professionals meeting. And then also on a monthly basis, there is an event called Connected in Christ. Uh, yes, currently it's taking, on, it's taking place online. Of course, everyone's looking forward to, to when we can meet in person again. But this month on the last uh, Saturday of the month, March the 27th, they have a, a special topic, New Beginnings, A Transformed Life in Christ. And we also remind all of the people who attend our church, the International Baptist Convention on our behalf makes it possible for us each as individuals to have a subscription to Right Now Media. People have compared this as the Christian Netflix. If you would like one of those accounts, it's already paid for on our behalf. Please get in touch with us and we can get you signed up for that. All right. Preti is going to have our time of benediction. Please, please, for everyone who can, when Preti finishes the benediction, even though we stop the recording, please stay on for a few more moments. Preti, we'll turn the microphone to you, please. Thank you, Pastor Ed. Uh, the benediction this morning is from Hebrews chapter 12, verses 2 to 3. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. This is the word of God. Amen.